Go ahead and call the meeting, the uh, study session meeting to order uh, May 10th, our straight study session. Madam Clerk, can you do the roll call, please? Assistant Secretary Arlene Schaefer. Here. Secretary Robert Newton. Present. Vice President Arthur Perry. Here. Dr. James Fireman is in trends that we hope. In trends that we mm -hmm. hope. <laughs> and President Michael Schaefer. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, public comments? Uh, Dale? Is it on a, you want to wait till, oh, you, you want, next, go ahead, I'm sorry. I looked at the wrong number. Uh, President Schaefer and uh, members of the board, I, my name, as you know, is Jim Mosher, and I had a non intended comment, but in the interest of efficiency, if I can start to comment with a with question. Has, has the board ever adopted something called a local hazards mitigation plan? Yes, uh, we we don't, um, we Rock does that for us. We Rock does that, we do it as a, as a regional um, organization. So the, the Water uh, Emergency Response Orange County, which is a regional organization that represents all the water and wastewater in Orange County, they, they prepare the hazard mitigation and we are part of that program. Okay. But the reason I was bringing that up is, is the Luther Beach City Council is tonight updating their plan and the resolution was mentioning that every city, county, and special district needs to have such a plan, although in the fine print they don't actually have, have it, but qualify for uh, grant funding, okay. grant for mm -hmm. a certain additional money you have to have one. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. May we ask a question? Is Newport in that? Um, Newport is part of Lee Rock. Yes, yeah, but they, they do their own um, hazard mitigation because they have their own emergency preparedness and stuff, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I think from a financial and expediency sake, we're better off not having to do one. It's a lot of work, too. It's a lot of work. It, it, we just want the resources, so it's expensive. it's good to have Rock take the lead on this. Exactly. I think we should have a, um, something noting our code funding you know, we have that, that we can use. We check with Alan. I thought we had already done that. Um, I'll, sure, I'll check. Yeah. We, we must have a little rule of the policy or procedure. Yeah, and that's formal yeah. 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 Let the public know. This is a good time to go there. Okay, uh, item one, organics. I have to answer any questions. Any questions for staff? Oh, it looks like it's sitting in the right way. It's going back down. You want to go back down. I'll move approval. Do we have No, it's just it's uh, for information. Thank you. Item two, code enforcement. Ed Roberts. Uh, good morning, Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, for the month of April 2016, uh, total of nine scavenging investigations. Nine of them were proactive. None of them were reactive to complaints. Uh, routine, nothing out of the ordinary for the first seven. Uh, I listed the additional two in a, a little paragraph for the benefit of the board. Um, under Scott's direction, uh, myself and our code enforcement volunteer uh, went out and did a early morning directed patrol in the uh, north end of town near South Coast Plaza, Palarino Corridor. Uh, during the course of the directed patrol, uh, we encountered one vehicle that was scavenging in a commercial, it was a uh, multi-family residential unit apartment building out of Ben's, out of, kind of out of the purview of what code enforcement does here. However, uh, we followed them. It was vehicle based. Uh, we didn't engage, you know, we didn't want to cause them to want to flee the scene or anything like that and hurt someone, so we just kind of paralleled them, made our presence felt, and kind of escorted them out of the city, and w which he did, left with no incident. Uh, the second instance was in the Mission Mendoza area apartment building. Uh, early morning hours, we encountered a female. Uh, by virtue of the two of us being male, early morning hours, dark, uh, again, we did more of a what we call a burnout, you know, make our presence felt, lights, brights on them, didn't get out of the car to engage just so there's no perception of impropriety or, or anything like that. So, uh, again, mission accomplished. Uh, she left the area with, with no incident. Uh, I did chart the, uh, on, on the report, we've changed the format a little bit. I've implemented uh, the addition of Google Maps for the benefit of the board mm -hmm. so you can kind of get a, oh, nice. uh, an idea of where the incident took place. And one of the attachments to the report also has uh, just an overview, uh, again, for your benefit of the concentration of scavengers. Uh, again, <laughs> primarily in the south end. Uh, you'll, you'll notice about seven of them in the south end. 
um, one on the east side, and uh, t those two that I listed uh, that were in the north end of town near South Coast Plaza. Uh, <coughs> moving from uh, scavenging on to trash card enforcement, uh, for the month of April, about 79 uh, cases, contacts made with folks regarding uh, trash containers. Uh, per the direction of the board, uh, I was told to concentrate in, in some of the alley corridors around uh, Baker, Wilson Street, um, w which I have been doing, so you, you, bless you, ma'am. Um, so I, I spent a lot of time just parked, parked in there, walking the alley, okay. seeing what I can find. So we have a lot of uh, apartment buildings in that area. Kind of difficult to uh, mm -hmm. identify whom the, the trash cart corresponds to, but most of the time you'll you'll find somebody. And that concludes it for me. Question. Yes, sir. We noted here that yeah, weekend enforcement. Yes, sir. What day of the week was that? Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Did, did I I stipulated weekend enforcement? Where, sir? Early morning on the first page. Early morning or weekend enforcement. Uh, that would be the uh, the report I provided the board, sir, uh, regarding the additional scavenging activity. You did that, Th that was the early morning, yeah. It came in about 4.30 in the morning, and uh, that, that's where we're out there. Uh, m most of the scavengers operate under the guise of early morning hours to avoid detection or, or interaction with the residents. I just wanted to comment, good job, and I like the idea that you went all over. Oh, <laughs> certainly appreciate you it. Know, Thank you very there much. There was man. a lot there. Yeah. Yeah. The, the one, it's storage of carts in public view. Those are still people who leave them on the street. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, it's not just because I know I have a couple of neighbors that keep them right up against the. I mean, they're you can see them when you drive by, but well, we we try, sir. Uh, de minimis rules. You, you know, if it's egregious, it, it's addressed. If it's something where where the uh, letter of law versus the spirit of law, if the resident's making a, a reasonable effort to, to screen out of view, we we try not to be too invasive. If it's complaint generated, then of course we'll address it. But. Uh, Try to focus primarily on the ones that are clearly out on the street or on the driveway or something like that. I have a question for Scott. Yes. Wendy Lisa emailed me two weeks ago about that same problem near her house. Mm -hmm. I think there's city enforced trash cans, right? Remember, she said that they're always leaving them out, and we were going to make contact with the city about it. If yeah. they're, yeah, if they're, if they're, you know, are they dense? Yeah, they're yeah, yeah. 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 we would make contact with the city. She, she just wanted to be an elder. There's like bins out of multi family that get rolled out. Certainly. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm familiar with the yeah. complaint Ms. Lee's has. Are those bins? They're commercial bins. Yeah, everything's uh, for the most part in relation to the apartment buildings which have where we're one of the competing uh, waste haulers. Mm -hmm. She just wanted me to know that it's still happening. Okay. For sure. I'll and every, on one additional point to you, sir. Um, on the corner of 18th and Placentia Street, there is an apartment building that I that I contact regularly. It's uh, it's not really the landlord. It's a, it's a revolving door of tenants. The, the folks coming in, uh, it, it caters to younger folks. So you'll see, they'll get on the plan for a couple months, comply, you know, maybe up to a year, and then there'll be a, a new crop of residents, and uh, you know that'll come back out again. So just it's it's maintenance. We'll uh, we do uh, contact the landlord and hold him ultimately accountable for the actions of his tenants. But in all fairness to the guy too, we uh, we try to you know notice the the tenants so they they, they know what the plan is. And younger is always a relative. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Yes, sir. Well, uh, well Ed, it, 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 uh, you know, I'm great. Every, every time I go by and open up a, a lift up, I'm looking at him and look at him and then he goes by and all this. <laughs> 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 I, 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 yeah, I always do <laughs> that. <laughs> 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 oh, I don't think anything out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that in the report anywhere. <laughs> 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 He wants that into the record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. President, as, as you heard from Ed, that uh, we believe uh, the majority of the scavengers uh, are operating in the cover of darkness. And so uh, Ed and I are trying to work out a time where he can spend dedicated a couple of weeks working at 4.30 in the morning at mm -hmm. dark and, and, and see what kind of activity is really out there. And then we'll present that report to you. And, and mm -hmm. I think we're going to see a huge yeah. spike. Yeah, I think it's mm. dark at 4.30? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. <laughs> Yeah. Not yet. Uh, m most of them, uh, w w I'm sorry, uh, w with the influx of folks coming in here under the 19th Street corridor, w we have a fairly rotating group of folks that come in and out. M most of them are advised during the course of my contact that the next step will be law enforcement, citation identification, and, and law enforcement interaction. Most of them, that dissuades them. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Always, always good, I think. Hey, sir. Um, okay, let's move to yeah. item three then. Yeah.
Thank you, Mr. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as you know, uh, one of our, our strategic goal is to reduce our, our hotspot location. I think to less than 30. I think it's the new goal. And for for the public's information, hotspots are uh, wastewater sections that are wastewater areas that, that need uh, more frequent cleaning. Uh, instead of once a year, they're cleaning two times, three times, sometimes even four times a year. And right now we're down to, I believe, 38 hotspots. We want, at one time we had 98. Mm. We're down to 38. And most of this is pretty much grease related uh, and, and deal with the, with the restaurants. And every every three months, uh, myself, um, uh, Rob Hammond, addiction engineer, Joe Jenkins from EDC, uh, Steve Kahn was also here, our, our wastewater maintenance superintendent, and our cleaning crew, we meet every three months. And the cleaning crew reports to us what they find when they're after they've cleaned the line. And a lot of times it's, it's grease. And if it's heavy grease, which we're experiencing like on 19th Street here, um, and a lot of it's because the restaurants don't have uh, grease interceptors. And the reason why is because they were grandfathered in, not requiring to have one when the, when the board adopted the, the FOG program. What the committee came up with is, 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 is when we're pitching this to the board today is to have a discussion and maybe establish a program similar to SLAP where we can provide some monetary in incentives um, or assistance to uh, the family-owned type um, businesses or restaurants. We're not, we're not talking about the corporate restaurants like, um, you know, BJ's or, um, you know, the, the um, McDonald's, McDonald's and Marie, Marie County, but more of the, the family-owned restaurants, mm. especially along here on 19th Street, mm. maybe uh, we can offer them assistance. So I've directed Joe Jenkins from EC to, to develop a program, which he's going to give you a presentation. He's also mm -hmm. giving a report, uh, what's in your staff, staff report. I do want to mention in that in that report, you'll see some highlighted in yellow. Those are kind of like some good discussion points if you want to have today, or we can bring it back at a later <coughs> time. But my recommendation right now is to hear uh, Joe's uh, report and then um, answer questions and give us directions where you want to go. So he's going to oh. do criteria. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Scott, for the introduction. Thank you to the board for allowing me to present today. So I just wanted to give a little bit of a background of how, kind of how we got to this point. Scott did a, a pretty good job of describing it, so I won't go into too many details. But it really started back in 2002 when the, the State Water Resources Control Board issued their waste discharge requirements, uh, basically requiring all sewer agencies. Well, in 2002, Region 8, eventually 2006, rolled out to the whole state, but the gist was stop having so many sanitary sewer overflows, develop and implement a sanitary sewer management plan, or an SSMP, and part of that plan was develop and implement a fog control program. So when the district implemented their fog control program, the first thing we did is went through and identified all of the food service establishment. So who has what type of cooking equipment, who has what type of grease control device or grease interceptor, and, and just put them all kind of in a database. And then for any new facility coming in or facilities that were undergoing remodel, required them to put in a grease interceptor to help control their grease. And as Scott mentioned, uh, for developed a committee that went and identified the hotspot areas and worked to reduce those hotspot areas and those sources. And so any existing uh, food service establishment without a grease control device, they were issued what's called a conditional waiver or conditional waiver permit but basically allowed them to, to operate as is. As long as they stayed compliant with their kitchen best management practices, they didn't have any modifications, additions, alterations to cooking equipment. There's no change in menu, facility name, facility type. And, there, and most importantly, there's no evidence of significant fog accumulation at their lateral. They're not causing or contributing to that so. And so just some stats on this. Currently, uh, the total existing FSCs with no grease control device at all, there's 307. That's about 60% of the total FSCs in the district. But in the hotspot areas, we're talking about about 59. Scott mentioned we're down to about 38 hotspot areas, so there's just a handful in there that still don't have any devices. And potentially this year could require immediate installations of up to 26 facilities because we're starting to be more proactive and, and requiring retrofits. Scott mentioned 19th Street is a very good example. It's essentially from Monrovia on west on 19th Street all the way down here to Harbor Boulevard. It's just restaurant row. Most of the FSCs, FSCs in there don't have any grease interceptor at all. Okay, so really there's three or four or so that have one, 
but the majority of um, um, our high grease producers don't have any mm -hmm. equipment. And you actually have done a lot of CCTV work in the line, seen a lot of fog accumulation in there. Sometimes the crews have to go out there and clean it like immediately to prevent sewer, uh, sanitary sewer overflows or backups. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a location that's kind of high on the priority to address. By requiring the installation of grease interceptors, either grease traps or gravity grease interceptors, as we call them, is expensive. It's a, it's a big burden on these facilities, especially as Scott mentioned, the low-income mom-and-pop type places. So you can just see some of the general costs, uh, kind, of, kind of a wide range, because there's a lot of options. But for the uh, our grease trap, like the one in the picture, we call them the passive units, because they don't have any wiper blades or heaters or anything like that. You can find them on the internet, maybe slightly used for around 500 bucks, all the way up to a brand new plastic model that's around 2500. The automatic removal devices range in that 2500 to 5000 range. Um, and then when you go to install them, for an above ground, you're looking at another thousand to two thousand dollars just for pulling permits and plumbing costs. Or if you're going below ground, you could have to re roof plumbing and there's excavation costs, so it's a little bit more for these. But Compared to the gravity grease interceptor installations, which is the, the larger concrete vault units, it's much more expensive. Um, we EEC does do grease interceptor installations as part of our, our, our the services we offer. And so we've been finding units in the $7,000, $7,500, dollars range um, for the smaller uh, size, 7, 750 gallons. But you can see them range all the way up to 15,000 gallons. New construction, usually you're looking at between $25,000 and $50,000 for the installation. But really what we're talking about here are the existing food service establishments. So they could be looking at $35,000 <coughs> is actually really cheap for an existing place. That means all your grease waste lines are already separated from your sanitary sewer. Little indoor plumbing stuff that needs to be done. Really the average that they're looking at for an existing facility is around $50,000 or so. And that's if you don't have any <coughs> unique conditions or any complications, you're not uh, relocating utilities or doing dewatering around the footing because the groundwater table is, is high right there. Um, so you'll be looking in that, that $50,000, $75,000 range as long as everything is, is kosher. So, as Scott mentioned, because it is a burden to these facilities, but we do want them to put in something. Uh, the district is proposing uh, this grease interceptor assistance program, I'm calling it conceptual at this point, because as Scott mentioned, there's still a lot of decisions that need to be made. Um, we're talking about loans potentially up to $50,000, that, that's a, a risk the district is going to have to take on, and so we want to make sure that the program mm -hmm. is hashed out and worked out before it's implemented. So essentially, there will be two types of assistance, either a grant up to $2,500 or a loan up to 75% of the installation costs or a maximum of $50,000. So we'll talk about one in a minute, but first, um, there'll be some qualifications that the FSCs will have to, to go through, basically, to, to make sure they qualify to receive a loan. So there'll, there'll be maybe a net revenue that cannot exceed a certain dollar amount. Um, I'll have to decide what, what that revenue should be. Um, but essentially, the GCD cost <coughs> installation could potentially cause permanent closure of the facility. You, you don't want to require the facilities to do something that would cause them to close their business. It's not very business friendly. Uh, the FSC is not a new construction or undergoing a remodel, so essentially the district has identified them, they're existing, they've identified them as discharging excessive grease or revo revoking their conditional waiver. So that's kind of the, the conditions here. And then the FSC will submit a justification letter basically proposing why they should receive assistance from the program. So for grants, as I mentioned, would be a maximum of $2,500. The intention of the grant is for is for the facilities that are installing uh, grease traps, mainly indoor grease traps for the three compartment sink only, or maybe adjacent sinks if they're close enough. And we think this will be um, a lot of facilities qualifying for this type of installation, this type of grant. Um, or it could be a temporary HGI with agreement to install a future gravity grease interceptor. Um, that's that might be some situations uh, there. Um, but essentially, the, the, the design has to be approved by the district uh, before it can be uh, granted. And they have to agree to the terms and conditions of the conditional waiver letter that we already 
um, give to the facilities who are installing hydrochemical <coughs> ice receptors instead of gravity freezing receptors. So for the loan, uh, as I mentioned, it'll be up to 75% with a maximum of $50,000. Um, this is for a grease control device connected to multiple, multiple sinks and drains. And so it could be a hydromechanical grease receptor that's maybe outside in ground that just has a multiple plumbing going to it because you're still looking about the same installation costs, it's just different as far as purchasing the unit. But, but basically the property owner and the food service establishment has to agree to the maintenance terms and I'll get into that here in a minute. Mainly it's because the property, the loan will be issued to the property owner and not the facility. But again, the design has to be approved by district staff, and the property owner provides a scope of work, lease contract, terms, and everything when they submit their justification. So more details into the loan terms. Loans would be issued for a five-year term. It'd be either zero or low interest loans. Um, the loan payments would be assessed to their property tax bill, so you guys don't have to hire new loan sharks or anything like that. Um, and then any loan balance in terms needs to be disclosed be disclosed as part of the real estate transaction if they do with the, with the new owner or they try to sell their business or sell a property. That way it doesn't get lost in the paperwork. But essentially the property owner would be responsible for the loan, not, not the FSC. That way the payments can be assessed to their tax bill. So just to give a sense, of the program funding of what it might pay, what we're projecting it may cost. Uh, projected <coughs> grant budget, we're thinking $50,000. That would provide grants up to 20 food service establishment, you know, one grant per, per food service establishment. And projected loan budget is $500,000. That, that would provide a, a, a approximately 10 to 15 food service establishments, pending available funds, and again, one loan per FSC. And so to break this down, and as I mentioned before, we have potentially 26 facilities within the next year who may be required to install grease control devices of some sort. Um, I believe 13 of those are, based on their location and the type of equipment they currently have, what we know about them, they would be required to put in at least a hydromechanical interceptor for the three pump sink. So they, would, they could qualify for grants. But then, um, Potentially, some of the FSCs that we would require a gravity grease interceptor may be able to make a case where they could install a hydromechanical instead of a gravity grease interceptor. So we could have six additional uh, additional FSCs that could also qualify for here. And that could be because maybe they're doing the, the temporary HGI with a future promise to do a gravity grease interceptor. Maybe they have spacing issues or slope issues, engineering restrictions. They can't put in a gravity grease interceptor. Or their kitchen waste can be captured by one device. And again, loans uh, looking at probably between seven on the low and high on the end for N13 FSCs. There could be less. And so if there's, it all depends on you know available funding for the program, you know how how much our loans and grants end up going to end up being. So it's just kind of a, a ballpark <coughs> estimation. So that's kind of the gist of the program. Again, there's more details in the report. There's a flow chart in there too, so you can kind of see the process that we go through. Um, some considerations too that I didn't mention in the presentation is just a extra burden on, on district staff um, to do the evaluations, issue the grants and the loans, either, you know, who's it going to be? Is it going to be Dora in there or possibly Wendy, you know, just to throw someone out there. So um, oh. those types of things <laughs> would be considered. Could, could you talk briefly about what other agencies have this or where you captured some of this information? Sure. Thanks, Rob. That was my question. Yeah, and so we, we did do an evaluation, um, and you know what, I, don't, I didn't bring it. It's, in, it's, in, the, the it's in the report. It's in the staff right? report. In the staff report is a list of uh, agencies that uh, have okay. similar programs. But there, there are uh, agencies that have done both loan programs and grant programs that we looked at and kind of evaluated the different um, policies right. that they implemented and how they did it. Um, one in that we work with a lot that comes to mind is the city of Orange. Um, did a loan program for a while, that's the one. Yeah. So I can I can just kind of go over them right here. So the first one, City of Portland up in Oregon. They, they have a very aggressive program where they were proactively requiring existing facilities. 
whether they were causing problems or not for putting grease traps. And so they, they instituted a low interest loan program. Um, City of San Juan Capistrano has a grant program they use. This is a facility out in Illinois. Uh, or not a facility, an agency. I think Elgin. Yeah. Uh, Dana Plumage has a grant Lovely program. Community. Yeah. <laughs> But I think um, all of what all of these programs have in common is that they wanted to protect their sewer system from overflows, but also they wanted to still be business friendly. You know, they want they don't want to put their facilities um, out of business by they understand the expenses that come along with this. Um, Gene in the city of Orange, when I spoke to him about his program, he said he really liked the program. They just ran out of funding for it, and now they don't do it anymore. So, but he said it was it was pretty helpful for to get some of their more, tr more, more problem food service establishments kind of up to snuff. Mm -hmm. I noticed, Joe, in all of these, it looks like Elgin was the only one that targeted a specific area. Mm -hmm. So they must have some kind of, similar to what we have a food, a foodie area. Yeah. Uh, every, not every um, tour agency will call their locations hotspots. It's not they don't like it as being politically correct mm -hmm. as if you have a problem. And so they'll call them our target areas, our <coughs> accelerated <coughs> focus areas, you know, something that, like that. That sounds less politically correct than yeah. a hot spot. <laughs> but, but, um, that's okay. but yeah, they, they probably had they probably had maybe a very large shopping center in a yeah. small city. Mm -hmm. You might have all of your facilities in one downtown strip area. And so but if you make all of those go out of business, it's going to be very public in a small community. How many hotspots would this program eliminate? Um, eliminate is, is tough to say right now, but... Or I, impact. Impact. Um, 20 plus. At it's least 20. 20 yeah, with Scott mentioned, we have 38 remaining hotspots, and I would say at least 75% of those are grease-related. Mm -hmm. How many was this? How many? So 19th Street. I guess I was thinking of 19th Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the thing about 19th Street, I think they're cleaning it quarterly right now, yes. right, Steve? Yeah, and so... I mean, you at least could move that from quarterly to every six month cleaning, nine month cleaning, something like that. You know, it at least would um, help with, you know, leave some of the stress on district resources. But so there are some locations where they're at nine month right now, and maybe an FSC putting in an interceptor could help push that out to annual. So we'd have to look at exactly how many it would reduce. But yeah. It certainly would help. Um, I know we were focusing on 19th Street here. Mm -hmm. What about Fast Food Road on Harbor Boulevard? I mean, although they're they're all fairly new, so I assume they all put gravity mm -hmm. systems in when they built those. Is that right? Yeah, and so North Harbor Boulevard, all of those facilities have grease interceptors. Um, I, I can't think of any major producer in there. And the good thing about that area too is it's a very large sewer line because it's near near the Orange Makes County sense. trunk line, so yeah. you really don't have that's fog true. blockage issues in that area. That, that's that's a good point. Yeah, but all of those have grease interceptors. Yeah. And even um, all that are in those shopping centers, there's property managed interceptors in there as well. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at really thinking about kind of the older areas of Costa Mesa, 19th Street, but also 17th Street on the west yeah. side too. There's a few there's a few shopping centers in there. We have multiple facilities mm -hmm. that don't have the devices. Yeah, I, mean, uh, yeah, I do. Um, out of curiosity, would this be open to the whole city as far as whatever restaurants? I couldn't, I didn't read anything here where it was, mm -hmm. you know, subject to a certain area. No, it would be, it'd be open to anyone within the district service area. Okay. And so anyone who the district basically we is, service. is revoking okay. their conditional waiver okay. could qualify for this. But then, again, we'd have to decide, is it only going to be for the low-income mom and pop type facilities, or are you going to open it up to all facilities well, through the plan? Yeah. That would go into your criteria, yeah. how you establish that. Yeah. Also, then you would, would you vision having some flyers made to give out to all these people that, you know? Yeah, possibly. I think it would be something you could mention. Usually when you revoke a waiver, you, you send them a letter uh -huh. saying, you presenting the evidence, here's the CCTV images, here's our inspection, this is why this is happening. Within the letter, you can mention the district has an assistance program. If you qualify, you know, it could help. You know, you could put it in there. Yeah. Um, you know, and, th and then um, there's other facilities probably too who 
you know, could potentially be causing problems in areas that you could reach out to. Where this is going to help is in shopping centers, where you have multiple FSCs, but you have other businesses as well. Because having them go in and put in a concrete interceptor means all of those facilities, you got to separate out their plumbing to connect everyone. And so the, really the best for them is to put in hydromechanical grease traps, and then and so the property owner or something can work with the facilities to get these traps in. Now, uh, maybe even like a temporary basis. Okay, and the, the ones that you um, put down here as far as having mm -hmm. this program going already, who is uh, monitoring that program? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure who actually monitors the program and issues out. I would assume the FOG program manager is, is part of it, but then when it comes to funding it and issuing the loan and following up on a loan, it might be some other building department or code enforcement department. So there, there might be some interdepartment communication at work there to make sure it works good. Certainly in larger agencies, there's more of a interdepartment work that needs to happen. In the smaller cities, it's usually like one program manager who's overseeing everything. Mm -hmm. you know? You're saying the city of Orange discontinued mm -hmm. simply because they ran out of money? Yeah, essentially, yeah. And I, I think, um, you know that too, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think one of the issues too in Orange is it's, it's an older city, and so most installations that have to happen there end up being expensive, and they're mainly <laughs> just issuing large amount yeah. loans. And, yeah, I, I am a little concerned money-wise on what's going on because... I think that's probably going to be a topic of in just a minute. So. Yeah, because <laughs> we have so many things going on but right now. We like to have the public comments, and I'll need you to fill out one of those little. Okay, about this topic. Yeah, okay. if you want to. One, um, one thing we might recommend is to do like a pilot program, you know, where you could uh, offer it to a select few FSCs to see how it works out. Um, but that's still money. Yeah. 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 Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just we have so many irons in the fire right now. And I'm just thinking that we're going to add one more. It, it sounds like a good program mm -hmm. and something well needed, but I almost see it down the road. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know. Yeah, I, I, I fully understand. I have a question for Wendy. You know, because you mentioned put it on the tax bill. Okay. How would how would that work for us? I have a lot of comments on about this. Okay. <laughs> I, I think we can help. Scott. Yeah. Before, before here anymore, I'm going to. I'm going to go ahead and open it up for public comment, and then we'll come back. Okay. Now. Thank you, sir. You do have to come back. Okay. Three minutes. Oh, it's just. Uh, is the time start from when you leave? <laughs> no, no. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so I've been in this industry as well. I've inspected restaurants. Uh, I used to work for the city of Huntington Beach and prior to that, Imperial Beach inspecting restaurants. So. Um, I understand what Joe is saying, and I just want to point out, too, that the gravity grease interceptors are causing issues, and Rob is also um, aware of that. If they don't get the proper flow and everything, then you can have odors and things occurring. At, so that's um, something that is not as, as optional or optimal, I guess, as the um, bring something directly in the kitchen that can take the grease, and it doesn't hit their sewer lateral. So that would be something that the property owners would want to address too, that they understand that it could impact because fog is very corrosive. And so you don't want it in your line, but they don't want it in their line either. And then um, I also had a question, um, I believe I gave Rob the cash for kitchens. Um, it was based on a conservation type thing, but West Basin had done it up in there that they were working with restaurants and kitchens in their service area, and they offered them um, things to uh, reduce water conservation for like sprayers, water brooms, faucet aerators, and control valves and things. And I believe that they did it in conjunction with CPUC. So there may be an option too that you could um, talk to CPUC if there's some way that you could tie it in because it is energy efficient and that um, it's reducing things, you know, with the sewer and the energy that it's taking, you know, and, and doing that part. Um, it can also contribute to the creation of renewable energy because they are taking fog now at several of the wastewater treatment plants and through anaerobic digestion they're actually doing cogeneration at the plant and powering the plant without having to take power off the grid and then any renewable energy left over will be put onto the grid for other people to use. And then again, 
it could be looked at as a water conservation effort too because we feel like the indoor type model so sure. thank, you. thank you very much anyone else from the public and we'll go back to directors i i think it's a good program um i don't mind helping but as a business owner myself when i started my business nobody offered me any assistance i i mean i pay for everything myself um and I'm, I, don't, I don't mean that flippantly i mean I, it, the slap program has been so good but it's been directed at the people that we serve personally you know um something like this I, I, we're opening it up going to businesses the loan the loan thing I'm not sure I want to see the district get into loan activity. I, 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 I have some difficulty with that. The assistance thing, I could maybe massage that into my thought process, but the loan part of it, if, if these people want to open a restaurant, there's a cost of doing business, and this this should be a cost of them doing the business, not us. That's just my thing. But you understand opinion. this is not this is not for new businesses. This is for existing businesses. I understand. Business. I understand. Mm -hmm. This is for businesses that've been around for a long time yeah. and been grandfathered in for the FOG yeah. program. I, I, the one thing I'm very appreciative of is there's no way in my thought process I would ever want raising. I would want to help raising kings, for example. So I, I really appreciate the fact that this would be the mom and pop. Uh, but again, I think that opens up some criteria problems that we we could run into. You know. Your idea of a mom and pop might be different than our ideas of a mom and pop. So anyway, this the board talk. Well, and uh, and I think we need to get some additional focus. You know, I asked how many hotspots this would would impact. Uh, of the thirty some, how many are Greece now? Uh, you, you know, like Joe said, seventy five percent. So, you know, you're you're looking what um, you know, twenty nine, thirty of them are. Okay, and 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 um, you know I think we need to get some focus on. I'm not for the loan program either, but uh, we need to help the FSEs that are directly contributing to the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, directly contributing to a hot spot. We need to limit it to them. And I'm you know I, I appreciate the staff's work to date, but. I don't think we have enough information yet. So the, the 20 the twenty some hotspots have X number of FFCs, uh, F, FSCs or whatever they're called. And a certain number of them are, are causing problems. And if we eliminate the problem, or half eliminate the problem, you know, we only half eliminate the cost, and we don't know what the cost savings is. Um, for the crew to clean a hot spot, I don't think it's very expensive. Uh, we have two crews, you know, and I, I don't know if uh, you know what they would do, how they would become more productive if they weren't, if they didn't have to attend to the X number of hot spots. <coughs> you know, we're looking at trying to eliminate eight, maybe. Um, there's still a lot of information, and I think we're in the information gathering stage. But, um, um, I'm sorry, you're next. I <laughs> That's okay. It was one of one of the jurisdictions, maybe orange, that required them to take out their garbage disposal. Oh yeah, city of La Palma. That's pretty much a, that. That was one one of the first rules of fog management. Out goes the garbage yeah. disposal. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they're not allowed in any mm -hmm. any restaurant anyway. Okay. So. Never, never, never. When we do that in homes, is mm. I would like to convince <laughs> the person I live with that the garbage disposal really isn't the any person. Mm. <laughs> Miss Wendy, be good if you did. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I'll end up with the trash. Um, I'm probably going to um, be in trouble later. <laughs> You, I, I think you probably are already in trouble. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So, in for a pound. I, I for a okay, well, so um, a couple things. First, for a grant program. Well, for both of these programs, okay, there's literally, let's just analogize this to the SLAP program. 
the SLAP program is sure we give out money and sure there's some finance time for processing the paperwork and then we're in-house and that just adds to our workload. But like with the SLAP program, you know, there's also contractor time. And so with this program, this would increase either Rob or um, EEC's time for and cost for, you know, reviewing these people's plans and doing all that. So there's that which never kind of gets added to the real cost of the program. So we have that now with the SLAP program. That's just that nebulous. And I'm assuming, like the SLAP program, that these people's um, permits and so forth would be waived and their inspection costs would be waived. So that's an added cost. But we, you know, with SLAP, we do capture that right now. Yeah. So we know how much we're giving away in free services, essentially. And so, um, so there's those type of things. Um, say it was just a grant program like SLAP. Okay, that's much easier to monitor. Um, you know, it's consistent with SLAP, but it's still a lot of time and, you know, an effort to do that for the in-house staff. Um, and depending on the budget of that, um, I'm assuming like SLAP, it would be an annual amount set aside. So that's, you know, we would have to find some money from somewhere. We're pretty much the, you know, we have a little contingency and stuff, but we haven't seen the reality of our um, full staff budgets in an, a couple years, even though we're in a new budget cycle. You know, we've cut down some things, but now we've got a second crew. We're going to have a CCTV in-house, you know. So we've got some things going on that we haven't really seen, you know, how tight our budget is going to get. And so a program like this, you know, I'm assuming that it's $50,000 or something for grants per year, like the SLAP is 200 per year, that we could make that happen. Um, if the board wanted that to happen. If you're talking like Orange's program where it's a 500000 and it's a one-time seed where you seed it and then you, you know, give out the grants, first come, first serve, and then you can't give another grant until <coughs> people have repaid a portion of their grant. So you may, you know, you may like Orange, you know, have 500000 you gave it out in one or two years, and now you're just waiting for people's repayments till you have enough to fund one more grant, you know, two or three years down the line. And so that's a lot of, you know, time and effort, and um, 50000 is quite a bit of money, so um, I think that that's a different thing. The only way I see, just off the top of my head, this is where I'm getting in trouble, away from people, is we would have to take money from CIP, you know, that we just don't have this in our operational budget to do a lump sum funding like that. And then, like Orange, it would probably go away rather quickly because a mom and pop with a $50,000, you know, added on to their property taxes is, you know, they're probably, it's only going to be $1,000 a year or something like that, you know. So you're talking a really long time, you know, for this person to pay, you know, or maybe $2,000, you got it down to 25 years, you know, well, none of us will be here. So that's kind of a, you know, you kind of got to wangle that issue with it. So, um, you know, you may not have funding for any more loans. It may just be you help those initial parties and then it kind of program dies off naturally by itself. Doesn't, um, doesn't that kind of tie to what Bob was saying with targeting the ones that really are the issues? If, if we did that, if, if we had more information on the ones that really are causing the problems and we targeted that, uh, and the other thing from funding, um, City of Dana Point, they implemented a program, Joe, with South Coast Water District. It says yeah, South Coast Water District is the, is the wastewater provider, mm -hmm. so not the city. Oh, from South Coast City of Dana Point to their own. No, yeah. so the, well, South Coast Waste South Coast mm -hmm. Water District provides the water wastewater service in Dana Point. Oh, okay. Special uh, district. I should, I should have that would give us an opportunity, though, to partner with Mesa Water or uh, City of Costa Mesa. Don't look at me like that. I'm just thinking out loud. Okay. I mean, <laughs> there, so I mean, there is that potential. I mean, this is a business entity program that we're talking about, and the city is the one that issues that business permit, so they have a direct relationship with these people for permitting. I would have to say that the city probably would not be interested, like water would not be interested, because like in this example with the one down south, 
you know, their water, so they're doing yeah. a utility fee mm -hmm. on that for their yeah, sewer, I, so they've got a vested interest. And, and I think I, I think I really knew that. Yeah. But I mean, there is that still that specter out there that can, can be done. Uh, yeah, I'm opposed to the loan program, but I think we should have a trial program set aside like fifty thousand dollars, and then we hit the four or five or six. What's it cost, Joe, for installation and a uh, trap? Outside. So like five thousand dollars, yeah, seven thousand dollars. If it's above ground, yeah. yeah that's what I'm saying. But I think you said like earlier it was like twenty five hundred dollars. Twenty five, twenty five, twenty five. They match twenty five, and then we help them with the installation, like up to like five thousand dollars each, and then you can do ten of them, roughly, as a, as a trial program, mm -hmm. and then see if that makes a difference in some of the hot spots. You you could actually pick a hot spot. Yeah. And say that hot spot is so bad that we're going to focus on that, that's what and I have then in mind. go in there yeah. and so try to take. Yeah, that's a Bob's that's a Bob's instead, instead of district. Yeah, line. yeah, we, we pick the spots on 19th Street, for example, as a trial, and have some money set aside there. If if they're willing to match up, you know, we put in 2,500, they put in 2,500. Well, does it make sense then? And I'll, I guess I'll Scott, I'll ask you to to come back with identifying the, that sure. those particular ones, and let's look at. The ones that really need, I mean, Joe, you know, you know, probably at the top of your head, you know who we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of why we're here is because yeah. we've been trying to lower all the hot spots and we ran into, okay, now it's what's left. We did structural, yeah. we did all these other things, now it's grease. Yeah. So, what are we going to do next? Well, I think it makes it, and if it's going to affect, if this particular area we're talking about affects 20, 26? 26. Then right. So we've there was just, we've pretty much taken care of what we need to take care of. So in our in our subcommittee meetings, there's basically two main hotspots we've been focusing on. One is the one right here on 19th Street. The other one is 17th Street. Um, mm -hmm. So those 26 fall kind of between those two okay. hotspots. And there's like a handful, of maybe five facilities that we know of in the district that are just constantly causing problems. You know, and, and one of those actually was resolved recently. That old Scott Seafood now it's the water grill is pointing in. Because they're doing a remodel. Yeah. yeah. So they would have been someone who we would have looked at in this yeah. program, even though they're a large system. Seafood place have that much grease. That's just, I mean, it's supposed to be. I mean, have you ever eaten at Red Lobster? <laughs> oh, fifty percent butter. Look, right. I mean, mm. look at me. I eat all over the place. Come on. No, <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. So I, I, I think that's what I'd recommend if you, if you guys can come back to us with. Identifying something who, more who and where is something more focused, like Bob said. Yep. Then we, we, Great. But I, I, I think you get the sense that I don't think any of us really like the loan program. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's that's what we're hoping with today's meeting is to get your, your feedback okay. and your comfort level. level. So uh, we, we'll come back with a, um, a proposal of a $50,000 program. We will, um, we know, like Joe says, 19 centuries are, are, are the, the hot spots. We'll focus. We'll come back with those those restaurants that would be eligible for this program, come up with some criteria as well as come up with some cost savings and what that means as far as savings or maintenance goes, we'll, we'll bring all that back to you. Okay. Does it make sense to talk to those businesses or do you want to wait? Oh, I'll oh, wait to so see what you think some, about the program. So we can offer I yeah, I once, there once there you, if you, if you want to proceed with a pilot <laughs> program and, and um, put in $50,000, then we'll go out and reach the, the restaurants. Okay. Does that seem reasonable to you financially? Um, um, it's a yes. You said 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 you you have any money in your budget? Is this something you could, you feel passionate about and could dig up? Um, I, I would suggest that yeah. you try to limit what you take from maintenance. Maintenance is yeah. where... Well, I think we take it out of CIP. Yeah. 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 And we're, we're going to talk about that some yeah, more in you know, 101, so there's there's plenty of money. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. President, mm -hmm. sir. from a CIP standpoint, I think we're doing very well. I think we're on top of what our replacements are. We do four or five projects a year, that's great. And the system's getting older. It's the end. We need to continue to think that we're going to have to step up more maintenance as the system gets older. We got calcium in the pipe. We have other problems. We have roots in the pipe. We need Steve's guys. We need TV. Yeah. So <coughs> I really look at it that the older you get, you 
need to do more maintenance, kind of like a car. Or a person. Right. Well, yeah. I think that yeah. uh, what I was asking him was that <coughs> he's got some accounts, and due to the change in staffing and, you know, contracting versus not, that he may or may not have some funds that, you know, he didn't expend this year. Well, that check the <coughs> year for maintenance. <coughs> okay. Because with um, Costa Mesa not taking care of our mm -hmm. vehicles right now, we have yeah, we have a lot left in there. But I was thinking, so we may just, uh, we're not taking away from what he, he would never, you know, deplete his resources so that he couldn't do his work. But there might be some, because we're at the end of the year, it's actually kind of a better time to do it than it is at the beginning of the year because you never know what's going to happen. So you don't want to say, oh, yeah, we did, we'll, we'll make this happen. So now is a good time and we may be able to do it. But there may be a project or two where he oh, comes in under budget yeah. and... We, we can always find some dollars in the CIP. So, yeah, so I think it's doable. Right now. We're still working on that right now. So we, have, we talked about that private firm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we're looking at we're looking at using like a mobile mechanic to come back and um, maintain it at our yard. I need to. We put out some we put out some bids. No one no one responded back. So um, I'm just going to reach out to. There's a couple I know of that uh, reach out to them, get the price. Contact me for a Yes, and it was their, you know, their fleet's so small, and it's actually their suggestion that it's going to actually go out the moment, in the moment of time. Yeah. Okay. With the CNP printing. <coughs> do, do we have a left at the dark? No. no, no. With the CNP projects, uh, I haven't been built for the last year or two. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of savings in each one. Yeah, a lot of savings. We haven't been built. So, so we have clear direction. Thank you. Can you add for the uh, waste and recycling coordinator meeting? I take Elizabeth's not getting the report. Yeah, Elizabeth and then uh, <laughs> Gina's going to do the report, but she's, she's got a doctor for me, so I'll, I'll, I'll take a stab at it. Uh, uh, so both uh, uh, Gina and Elizabeth from our staff uh, attended uh, a recent uh, on the April 21st uh, OC Waste and Recycling Coordinator meeting, and they had a, a, a few guest speakers uh, or um, Presentation one, um, Jesus Perez is the new coordinator for the House of House Waste Program, and, and we're going to be gearing up to have our our um, collection event at OCC in, in the fall. Nice. So we'll be uh, coordinating with Jesus. Uh, Mallory Burden gave an update on AB 1826. Uh, that's where cities have to submit their mandatory <coughs> organic recycling for commercial recycling, um, and it's due on August 13, 2017. Then you have uh, Debbie Kelly from JR Growth Associates uh, presented uh, Fix It Clinic. I guess it's a new program that they're um, reaching out to organizations uh, that guide person through the same the same one process. Don't know what that means, but what are they dissembling? I have no idea. Um, and then uh, Lisa Keatings from OC Waste and Recycling. Um, announced the importation agreement. I, I'm, from my understanding, has been approved by the board, by the uh, county board of supervisors, uh, which means uh, we should be getting a check from them probably in the fall for about seventy-six thousand dollars. I remember we, we signed that agreement. All the agencies in Orange County had to agree, agree to it. Um, Irvine and Santa Cruz were the last holdouts, but they came they came to terms, and I believe the board of supervisors have, have approved that agreement. So, so that's a nice little additional money to uh, um, to the to, to us. And then they talk about AB 45, which is uh, another household hazard waste bill. Uh, it was amended; no longer requires jurisdiction to implement mandatory HW recycling programs. And this one has been opposed by SWANA. And that's it. Okay. Um, can I skip over something? Well, the agenda on here is different. Than yeah, yeah. Right. It is. Um, I before the CR and R guys, you're probably going to leave after this. Yeah. <laughs> can I, can I, I'm going to take the liberties to bring item <coughs> B, 5, is that 5? Yeah. Oral communication director's comments. I'm going to bring up something because they need to hear this. Okay. Um, I had a constituent come by my office yesterday, and she and her husband are helping their neighbor who is a hoarder. And this lady had had some medical issues, and when the fire department showed up, they pretty much said, you got a problem inside, and it's happened twice. So this person and her husband volunteered to go in and clean the place out to help them. Mm. And they had bags and bags of trash. And 
for our partners down there? I can't see him. He's still hiding there. under the <laughs> I know. <laughs> Apparently, CRNR will charge $8 to go pick up these bags. Is that right, Dean? How many bags are there? There's there more like, than 30. There were like a bunch of them, like yeah. probably 10 or 12. Well, they if they got if they're up this up to thirty. That's that's their uh, large amount of collection. Yeah, yeah. I think. Well, but <laughs> well, anyway, so they have these bags of trash, and they were told that on your regular trash day we'll pick those up. Mm -hmm. But there's an eight dollar charge, so this lady paid her eight dollars on a credit card, mm -hmm. and they didn't get picked up on their regular trash day. So they called back, and CR said we'll be there next week. Mm. Okay. So they got picked up, but CRNR ended up refunding her eight dollars back to her on her credit card. Then they sent her a check for eight dollars, and then they billed her for sixteen dollars. Sounds like they got a counting issue with her CRNR. Well, so I, I, I didn't know. Um, <laughs> these people were trying to do a good deed to help their neighbor, and she was a little hot. Yeah, I, I can uh, imagine. Lawrence, be, she's been talking to Angel. Okay. Is there an Angel? I, I think Other than you, I mean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think there may be an customer, in our customer service. So. Okay. Yeah, we'll get an address. If we get an address, then I'll certainly make sure we take care of it. Well, whoever Mrs. Schlutz talked to said, write void on the check and mail it back to us. And she said, why should I spend 50 cents to mail this check back? So I have the check okay. and the bill. If you guys want to look into this. Absolutely. And maybe my thought process was, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of it. Maybe <coughs> help her out with the hoarder with like a complimentary bin, bin still or have something. More, still have more. Yeah. Well, but if you guys would just look into that, I'd really appreciate it. Well, sure. normally what we would do is we would tell them that they're entitled to large item pickup and then mm -hmm. because if they're a neighbor then they can yeah. use theirs on the same day and just mm -hmm. you know do it that way that you know they should have they right. wouldn't have to pay anything and well, I'd between never the two neighbors and if they went around to their other neighbors they could say hey could we use one of your large item pickups yeah. and get you know some items out in front of your house and you know it's it's actually well because we've had people do this before I, I had never heard of this eight dollar <coughs> thing so that's why I well we, mm -hmm. we don't have an eight dollar thing that's, that's right well that's when, that. <laughs> I hate to say this but the resident said to I think again angel well mm -hmm. I know Mike Schaefer he's on the sanitary district board <laughs> so I'm gonna go talk to him and whoever the person on the other end of the line says well that doesn't make any difference we're two separate companies or something like that but right. mm -hmm. you know trans Lots of things get lost in the translation, so I appreciate you guys mm -hmm. looking into that. Absolutely. Thing. Thank you. We should have solved that. I could have used it. That would have been worse. <laughs> no, it's been free. I do it all the time, yeah. and I don't Thanks, have guys. any problem. I don't really yeah, appreciate it. Seriously. Okay, then I'll, I'm going to move out of item number five. Um, okay. Okay. Item number five. Item number five. So thank you, uh, okay. Mr. Mr. President. So, um, this is the, the results of the ad hoc committee, which mm. would consisted of uh, Vice President uh, Perry and Assistant Secretary uh, Schaefer. Uh, they worked very hard on reviewing all our policies, including our administrative regulations, our operations code, and our employee handbook. And uh, this is one of the requirements uh, that the board needs to review all our policies to in order to um, submit our recertification for distinction with the CSDA. So this is the process we have to follow through. So you'll see there's a 11-page um, or 10-page, 10, 10, 11-page staff report of all the recommended changes or the comments made by the committee. And so if the um, board pleases, I can go by, or the committee wants to, we can go by each each item and talk about it. And it's up to you how you, how you want to proceed. Uh, I'd suggest that, you know, that they inform us of the ones that we ought to know about. And most of them are procedural or administrative or typos, you know, those kinds of things. So I'd limit to the top five. Okay, I've got the if first I one. I got way. the first one. Mm -hmm. You know, we when we reviewed these, we didn't know that they were in the codes. And the, like, we, I didn't know that we really had a petty cash fund. So you want to address that? It's what, on what page that? 25 on the, on, the third, on the third page. So our petty cash fund is um, limited to $100 maximum. 
Anything greater than $100, they must submit the receipts and we'll pay it through AP. We keep a cash box in our safe. I'm the custodian of that. Um, we replenish ourselves. Uh, usually, Caitlin will process the replenishment and cash it at the bank. Um, we have a hundred dollars in our in another um, till that we make change out of in the um, for the customers that come in. So that's separate from the petty cash, but we sometimes have to use our petty cash to break you know, people's larger bills or make change. So petty cash is anything that's less than $100 and it does have to be signed by the individual and their supervisor. Then when the entire petty cash packet is going for replenishment, um, which is about monthly, then Scott will review it and sign it in the normal AP process and I will review and sign it in the AP process. But if I replenish someone's cash or Caitlin, um, replenishes someone, you know, who went, had to go buy lollipops for a giveaway or whatever, then um, we initial, each of us initial, whoever gave that person the cash. So we're always balancing and, and uh, replenishing. Does that answer? Yeah, that's okay. good. Because we, mm -hmm. we didn't really know you had a petty mm -hmm. cash on we wanted yeah. other board members. To well, I think what it does is, it, like she said, if someone has to pick up yeah, something I agree. real quick, mm -hmm. rather than submit a reimbursement, write them a check and... Yeah, yeah, this no, makes it Let me do a couple more, and then Arlene can do a couple. Okay. On uh, page 18, it's on page 4, excuse me, page 4, on, on the operations code 18. Uh, the committee wants to bring this back to the board for discussion regarding term limits for the board officers. Uh, right now, I think it's like two years. But I was suggesting maybe we review that on a case-by-case -case basis and maybe make it a one-year so that we can rotate through a four-year term with at least four presidents. So that was just for discussion. That's why I brought that to our attention. And then, um, I don't know if we want to talk about that now or do we? I, I, I think you, you want us to bring that back to a, a study session for, right. for the, yes. There's actually quite a few um, codes that you'll see in, in the staff report that the, the community wants us to bring back in the study session. Like uh, one um, my friend skipped over was, um, Page eight, section one zero six zero three. This is on page four of your staff report. Administrative citation general, uh, generally. Um, uh, the committee wants the board to review this section during study session meetings. So, which is about us, um, you know, uh, issuing administrative citations. We can we can mail those out if we, if we need to. But uh, and the committee want to just mm -hmm. discuss that at the study session. We can, we can bring that back. No problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've got one more on the <laughs> operations code, page five, page twenty four. So it's page five of the eleven page 24, review the section of upcoming study session, make any changes they feel are necessary. How do we get a, basically get an item on the agenda? And I think we, yeah. can you speak to that? That's, it has to come through the president for approval? Yeah, it's uh, a, a couple of years ago, the, the board established procedure is that, uh, from America, we, um, the, the board member technically has to go through the, the board president and the board president consults with me to make sure that we have the staff time to um, do that research, prepare that staff report, and then it goes on, it goes on just so it wasn't just, there's some procedures to follow, yeah. you know, so. Okay. I just want, okay, then the last one for me is on the employee handbook, it's on page seven, and then page 20, excuse me, 45, page seven, and then page 40, 45. Time cards, core hours, and adjustments. Yeah. You know, I didn't know how we go about, who, you know, how the time card works. We, um, about, I think a year ago, we changed back, we were using ADP as an automated time card. It was very uh, cumbersome, and it, done, it didn't flow into our Springbrook software. So we went back to um, paper time cards that show our FLSA weeks and our start and end times for each um, individual. So each employee has a spreadsheet time card that they put their time in and it calculates for us. And then their supervisor approves that. Um, overtime has to be approved ahead of time, except for in the sewer department, if someone's on standby, then that's, that's a form of overtime that's on their cards. I can email you a copy of what their time cards look like. So they put in their standby 
time and then if they actually get a call out or a phone advice that would show up and so they have a page where they note exactly what happened for the overtime it was a spill or whatever and then that's reviewed and approved by the superintendent and then all time cards are once they're approved by their supervisor um, so mine goes to Scott, Milani's goes to Scott, Ed's goes to Scott. Then once they're all approved, then we input them into our system. Part of the reason we bought the uh, upgraded the Springbrook last year and we um, bought the ESS module is it has a time card system in it. But we've had some difficulty with the um, the internet interface with the yard. So, but eventually, what I'd like to do is get the um, the time card that's in Springbrook at least for the exempt employees, the non-hourly, to use that time card so that we wouldn't have to input that back into Springbrook, that it would just automatically flow in as a batch. But pretty much now, um, any adjustments or anything like that are reviewed you know, during the process by the supervisor and then by finance. So one of the things finance does is check calendars and verify that people were absent or sick or you know whatever um, when we're inputting. Yeah, I'm just because I really didn't know that much about the plan. That's why I wanted to bring it to the board's attention to so when somebody asks you, you can answer one. Why do you, why do, you do a time card on the center for Um, that's an excellent question. It's just documentation. We we don't have a or we have a policy here that's called um, public accountability. And so if you're absent for more than a certain number of hours during the day, you still have to take sick or vacation. So you would need to claim that. If you were on vacation, you would need to claim that. So we still document it as a control. You know, at cities, they would have it um, even for exempt employees because they may have special funding, like in the police department where someone's on a task force. And so that person could be exempt, but they still have to it's prove have to prove that they got paid. That, yeah. Yes. So it's just a common practice that all employees have time cards. Yeah, you do have some yeah, I do. Um, okay. First one is um, on oh, on the uh, page pages seventeen and eighteen. Page, page two on staff report. Yeah, page two on the staff yeah. report. And pages seventeen and eighteen, when we're talking about the safety award and excellence, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this means that should be in here or not, but it's a comment I have. On different things that we go to, we need to have some kind of recognition, some kind of uh, something made up uh, on paper, you know, with a kind of, yeah, so that we can give proclamations and give uh, rec some something to give out to the people. Just like we just did the groundbreaking, and it was okay because we didn't have anything, but it, it was kind of tacky. But we're going to do it when we have the grand opening, and that'll be nicer. But still. Oh, yeah. That's where the OCC recycles. Yes, yeah, the OCC. Yeah. 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 But, you know, it, it is, when we're invited to something, it is kind of nice to have something Would for. Would that go here, or is that under I'm saying, another section? I, I'm saying I'm not sure it'd be under this, but I just wanted to comment on it, uh, you know. So that we might take that into consideration. I don't know if we have to discuss it or you know just. Yeah, these things you you can read what our yeah that we thought should come to your attention, and then we'll just I think Arlene might have more to highlight. Yeah, and then on uh, page three of eleven, and it's pages thirty to thirty one on liability claim procedures. Uh, on this, it's interesting to note that, you know, with the police, mm -hmm. uh, with the notification of the collisions, and that at, on the very bottom of the question, are employees required to take pictures? <coughs> you know, and uh, it said yes. Well, you know, we weren't even aware of all of this. But it, it's interesting. So we just want to make the board aware that this, you know, that they do have procedures. Yeah, to follow. that there is procedures to follow on something like this. Well, I think it's interesting. The first one about contacting a police officer in a collision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My comment to that is good luck. Yeah, they'll only come if there's an injury. They'll only come, yeah. if, and a lot of times, even if there's an injury, they'll 
they won't they won't go. Uh, I mean, I I run into this on a daily basis. So to require us to call the police, we might want to talk about that. Yeah. No, all they can say is no. Yeah, they, they, the police were notified. Yeah, that's all they can say is no. I don't, I don't have yeah. a problem with that either. I, again, good luck. And then on uh, page 6 of 11, employee handbook, <coughs> the main thing is I think Art and I both feel that, you know, you need to really look at that employee's handbook because we did. We went through every single page of everything, and that's why it took us so long. But there are so many things in there that we didn't know that we, as a board, and thought we knew everything. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to, you know, look at that employee handbook. And let's see. Oh, I had the time card too, but that was already discussed, so that's that. Um, oh, and then on uh, page 10 of 11, on um, the page 128, policy 3.44, uh, defining supervisor. We didn't know the pecking order of who was what, really, when you come down to it. And so my thought was, and if you, all of you would agree, that we need an organization chart. Because we're getting so many people now in, and it's so hard to understand who is over who and what's and their names and so forth. So anyway, that's my suggestion too, if the board would um, I'd, I'd like it to come back. We have an organizational chart that we put in our budget document. And the reason that it's shown in the, the budget document is because when we adopt the budget, that's the positions you've approved. Mm -hmm. And so unless we come back to the board with <coughs> new positions, then until there's another budget, of course I can't find it, then this is the funded positions and the, you know, the pecking order should be according to is this. It, is it on our website too? Yeah, yeah it board. should be on our website. Yeah, it's on our too. website too. We have an orchard on our website. Well, and it's also required by the SFMP. Right. right. So, but this is the current, you know, based on the budget you adopted, yeah. that's okay. the, the current. Yeah. So, but it will change if you went, you know, it. Mm -hmm. So some of these positions are unfunded, but they're still, or they're funded, but they're not filled. filled. Not filled. Okay. But that doesn't change anything. Well, do you think that could be given out again? Just sure, that sure. One? And it is on our website yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Okay. I can, would you like an email to you? Please. Okay. Okay. I can do that. Mm -hmm. Since I'm just quick, mind, are we Sorry. on the same page, just below that, uh -huh. um, pages 134, policy 3.4.2, on mm -hmm. drug testing. Mm -hmm. In our drug testing parameters, does it list the drugs that are being tested for? Uh, do they just, they, um, I'm not sure they do or not. Um, it would depend on the authority. The, the authority would list the types of drugs like DOT. Yeah. List the types yeah, of yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of thinking that after November, that will, may have to be revised, depending on how the vote on marijuana goes. Mm. Oh, well, it's yeah. the it's, it's same. Alcohol is legal to drink, too, but you can't drink when you're driving. So you wouldn't yeah. change that? No, no. No, I wouldn't work. no you, can't smoke, you can't smoke when you're working. Just like you can't drink when you're working. Oh, yeah. I, I, that, the way you say that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Then, then, I, then I think, are you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, then I think the rest of this, the, the, the changes to the all the codes, different Handbooks and codes. Mm -hmm. Scott's retyped up, and then that's yeah, going to be the official document. Yeah, well, uh, I, I do want to mention one thing. Um, okay. if, I, if I may, there's one one change I, I think of the top of my head. It's on that the committee did not review, and that's on on page seven, the staff report. It's a new policy on page um, 48. It's called our closed circuit television inspection pay. Hmm. As you know, we're oh, yeah. uh, the new fiscal year. We're going to get uh, a, a CCTV truck or a CCTV trailer, mm -hmm. and uh, um, to review to view pipelines, determine the grades based on the National Association of Sewer Service Companies Pipeline Assessment and Certification Program. You need someone trained in that to mm -hmm. determine what's a five, what's a four, what's a three. Yeah. 
-hmm. And so we had a couple of staff members that stepped up and said, hey, I want to get trained on that. I want to be the person on the CCTV. And because that's a specialized um, service, uh, we think it's warranted to, that they would get an additional premium pay of 1.5% of their base salary. We do that right now for the CWA certification. So every grade they get, so they get 1.5%. So they get, if they're on grade fours, that's a 6% raise they're getting. In fact, it's a, Steve Connell's got a grade four, so he's, his salary went up 6% because of the 1.5%. I have a grade five. No, I didn't get anything. Yeah, that's uh -huh. engineering. I think it's different. I only have maintenance. I have that down. Well, and this also taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Those are plant maintenance. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's plant maintenance. You refused thank it you. anyway, wouldn't you? I have, I have that down, and I this passed class over. This that he attended, yeah. it actually teaches them to run the equipment. Oh, it's yeah. not just, because I was thinking yeah. of sending my already, person, and it's not yeah, uh, one person has. One has, yeah. Who, who's that? Not Brad, Steve. Brad and Hickman. But it could be mm -hmm. anybody, because they need to know how to actually yeah. run the yeah, equipment. We, it's we not just than, like what you look at. We need at. more than it's, one. They yeah. should all probably do yeah. well, it if they're smart. It's, it's up to them, you know, and, and it's, it gives us, okay, who, who has the initiative? Who wants to take initiative and make more money and learn a little more about the profession? Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, Brandon is, is done it. I think um, Jesse's going to want to do it and Steve's going to do it. What so, do they do? The company that own, that we're buying the equipment from put it on. No, but not them, but there's also, I wish Steve was here. You would yeah. tell, they, they, there's another, there's training all over that they go to. It has to be, it's special training. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But it's not just in what you're seeing in the pipe, it's all about days. the equipment because I wanted to send my staff too. And he said it's not appropriate because it doesn't tell you what you're seeing in the pipe, it tells you how to run the equipment. Yeah, so, no, um, that's really but good. just a point of order on this is when these people are getting special pays, special pays are personable. Mm -hmm. And so, and they're also added on to their overtime here. So, yeah. it's, you know, it's a significant amount. We could rent them out later too. Mm -hmm. To other agencies. Mm -hmm. Sure. I wanted, to make, funds. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make one more comment. We need to really thank Scott because he really put this together. We did a lot of the we did the we, questions. Yeah, and the legwork and, and met together without Scott and then got together with him and he really put this together for us. Mm -hmm. so. Who do you want to thank? It's team effort for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. He did it. Right. Right. So, uh, can, I, can I address a couple questions in here though really quickly? Okay, there's on page 7 of 10, which I'm not sure we're all on the page same numbers. No, but you're, you're right. This is page um, 61 policy. 2.3.8 retirement and it says the committee wanted to know um, the board of directors mm -hmm. pays into social security the answer is yes because the board is not enrolled in PERS so that mm -hmm. is definite but the next one down the um, death after okay. retirement benefit mm -hmm. the district pays into L um, long term disability and dismemberment LD. that's different than this no, but that's where the $500 benefit is. It doesn't come from us. Right. The long-term, how do you say that? Long-term disability and dismemberment? Yeah. Is that right? Dismember, right. Don't, okay. Dismemberment's not really used anymore. Clinical. <laughs> okay, it's not long-term okay. disability. Well, anyway, so the district doesn't actually pay for it. It's actually part of that benefit. And then PERS would have a retirement, or would have a um, $2,500 benefit to it. A perisable employee that would do it. So those are the two things. But well, before you move up to retirement, if you don't mind, um, we still pay into the ICMARC program, right? We're still. I mean, I get the one dollar a month. The, the yes. first comp. Yeah, yeah we've. Um, Caitlin's been uh, asking me, me to research that because um, I think the district's actually paying that on your behalf. We're not deducting it from. I don't think you're deducting. I was going to yeah. say I don't think you're deducting so, the dollar, and I and think I, all of us would we, want to do that. She wants me to research it because she believes that that is um, um, makes it invalid if we're paying it for you or something like that. I have to look it up and see. Just oh, make really? sure that you, we're going to research it. If, if when you research it, if you're going to keep a senator for cop, you have to deduct the dollar before you do any other calculations. Yes. We're only in the for, we're only in the for cop because we're in the health thing. Yes. Yeah, but we're, uh, we're, we're, we're talking about getting no, out no, of that, Right, Caitlin, that no. isn't why we did that. No. It was so that everybody else could be in a deferred comp program. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. pulled all the previous staff reports and I just yeah. haven't had a chance to, you know, start with the beginning of time and go, but I have the staff reports and uh, Diana and HR, I gave her a copy so she's researching it. So we'll be able to get back to the board on this. Would you do me one favor sure. when you're researching that? Right now, we, we do a token dollar the first pop, 
can you research to see if, if I want to put more in that deferred comp if I could do that? You can include that as part of your... Sure. We I can mean, do it's, no I mean, if I'm being taxed on this money, um, I should get the opportunity to put more of it into a deferred situation if I want. Yeah, we can look Just curious. Thank you. Um, the pre-retirement death benefits, um, so I just wanted to clarify what Scott said is the way ours <coughs> works is if you're a working employee and you pass away, then they just cash you out, okay? They give your beneficiary everything you contributed and the interest you earned on yours. But the amount for the district stays with the district. You do not get that. That is our contribution that does not go to the employee. So it says down here that yes, that they'll get, they'll receive the employee and employer's contribution plus interest. You only get the employee share back plus their interest. Ours, our portion that we contributed um, stays with us. So if you have an employee, you're looking up like you're thinking well, no, about I that. Because <laughs> we were talking about this at SDMA last week, kind of indirectly, and I was trying to remember what, what I was told there. I think it was basically the same thing, that PERS doesn't, the employer contribution to PERS is the, employer is the employer's contribution that stays with the employer, which makes, you know, looking up was my little wheels turning. So. So hypothetically, we have some employees here where we pay the employee and employer share. The employee would still get the employee share, and they would get interest earned on that, and that's cashed out, you know, automatically upon death. Now, if you've actually retired, then you get the employer contribution. Well, if you've retired, then depending on what you signed up for, right. then your spouse will get, you know, the continued payment if you elected one of those plans right. or. Or it may be that you just didn't elect to give your spouse anything, so then again you would get cashed out. Um, so that's yeah. just to answer and clarify and that. And they get, every employee gets that option in terms of how they want the disbursements made, whether they want it joint or individual, and they get that choice when they get down to the... When you're, when you're applying, when you're, you're applying. required to make a selection. Um, so, like, I looked at my paperwork to say, what do I want to do? Do I want to give Mark, you know, 25%, right. 50%, you know, or whatever that is if something happened to me once I retired. Did you but check since the pound I'm sand <laughs> box? <down the> box. <laughs> but so, since I'm currently an employee, it has a, it's not an issue yeah. since right. there's nothing to select. It would automatically go to the beneficiary. Okay. And I don't think we have anything else that we wanted to clarify. Um, the, I, you know, I wanted to, the unauthorized expenses, um, the, co the committee discussed the um, supplemental insurance on rental cars and uh, the reason why this is considered unauthorized. Um, we just, you know, the employee's insurance, because they're driving the car, should cover them. Um, so we, you're smiling, so is that not correct? Yeah, does that well, cover the board <laughs> members too when we get a car? Well, you have your own insurance, so you're renting a car under your name. Okay. So it's, we, we wouldn't have anything to... If I, if I go to a conference yeah. and I rent a car, and I have to drive from Oakland Airport to Napa, mm -hmm. with these two and getting me lost. Anyway, so <laughs> driving from, from Oakland Airport to Napa, and I rent that car in my name, but I'm expressly there on a business reason, okay? My insurance company is going to have difficulty covering me since I'm not in a personal use of that vehicle. Yeah, SDR may should pick that up. SDR may should pick it up pick if it up. we have our car insured. Mm -hmm. if, we have, if we have that, it's called employer's non-ownership. Well, I think in reality when we've had something happen, mm -hmm. They've tried to go after the personal insurance first, and then not they may go after not if we're on. They will. You're right. But we don't need will. the supplemental insurance either way. I, I'm just going to say, if 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 SDRMA is extending the, if, if we're if we've taken that option for the non-ownership mm -hmm. coverage, then we don't need to buy the supplemental insurance. Exactly. For the right. car. Okay. We should never because okay. we're, uh, we're covered at least two different. And ways. you're right. If you rent a car, and you have the coverage you need, if you have the 
the, full coverage yeah, from your company. Will what we've seen in the past is then your insurance company, your personal insurance company says, oh, no, 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 you are on business. That's and they try and deflect yeah. it over there. And that, and normally SDRMA or whoever your self-insurance, you know, at cities it varies, right. will pick it up. It's right. not a problem. It works out fine. Okay. Well, I don't take any of the insurance because I have such good insurance. You know, my 21st century insurance me for everything, so I don't take any of the insurance. Just don't turn in a claim to 21st century. I have, and they pay everything. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. Anybody who buys insurance. <laughs> but, I, but it was a rental car. There's a couple of companies that actually exclude coverage on rental cars, but we won't we won't name the names like Mercury. Or <laughs> Should I, you know, I do I, I just decline all insurance. That's, that's yeah, and that's what we're. we're I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I have. Appreciate right. it. So at this point, you're going to bring the noted ones back to the next or to a future. Yes, what we'll decision. do is no. We'll, actually, what we'll do is we're going to bring this back. And your um, your May board meeting, and um, the co the the change in the in the code will be actually an ordinance. You'll be adopting an ordinance. So I'll have um, Alan look at that. You'll oh, okay. be basically um, uh, rescinding the entire ordinance and adopting the the, the new ordinance with the changes. Okay. And then for the uh, administrative policies and the employee handbook, you'll adopt resolutions okay. for those. And then we send those resolutions and the ordinance with our packet to CSD for district okay. distinction. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good job. Yeah, that's what we have. Well, thank you. I mean, I, this was a lot of work. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I commended to uh, the ad hoc. Yes, yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 they did most of the work. I just <laughs> typed it up. Punch. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, it's, I, and we do, and this is going to tie in nicely to our district of distinction <laughs> right. board. So yeah. Okay. Perfect timing. Yeah. 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 That wasn't our main reason, but that yeah. worked out that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. Um, before we get into six and seven, which may take some discussion, can we take two minutes? Perfect. All right. Yes. Jim's fine. He had a request. He forgot the main uh, thing. Would like to he speak said, I public oh comments shit, I didn't have it down. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Before he we says, do I needed so somebody to call uh, me and nobody called. If you want to come back up. And, uh, you know, she to usually does. I do. So I was just curious anyway, about shouldn't the have to. Uh, for grown people. environmental project for your um, regional board action, whether that was still in play because I've been holding off on uh, certifying restaurants in Costa Mesa area because I don't want it to affect whether they would say yes, this would be a viable step. So I was just curious whether you guys have made a determination because I um, haven't been invited back to make a stronger presentation on it. But I understand that, you know, it's still in play with your uh, regional board thing. So I would like to know what's going on. I'm not sure how much we can this well, I think she's just she's sneaking direction. Are we going to do it or not? I think that's what. Yeah, it, 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 if we're not going to do it, then she'll, she'll move on. We need to make a decision. Let's we'll just tell her yes or no. We're well, going to do it. We don't know well, we what's going to happen. What's going to happen with, with this? Yeah, but I, I'm just saying, uh, true. But even if it does happen, I I, I think she's not getting the inclination. We're going to go with her step. Yeah, I, I think you know, what we sort of focused on, uh, if, if if it ends up being a step, uh, we've looked at some environmental issues in Fairview Park especially, especially that we're probably going to, I, I can't say probably, that's what we've discussed. I don't, know, I, I don't think, I don't think we can do any of those. Yeah, and I would ones. also say that um, the regional board is likely to not accept that as a set because it has no relation to, because yeah. I used to work for one of the regional boards and I did look through that extensively because I was aware of the issue with Fairview Park. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't, I'm a volunteer with this program, so sure. I mean, um, but it would be great to get the funding, and like I said, it directly affects and um, helps the BOG program, yep. and makes it stronger going forward, that you can put it in your SSMP as well, that you are partnering and doing this additional outreach and education as an incentive program, where it's not a compliance, you guys are on the compliance side. Surf Rider is on the incentive side, and it's being very well, um, the restaurants love it. You know, I mean, we've got Facebook set up and everything, and they're, you know, they're happy with the program and everything, so um, I would just like, you know. I, I think what I would like to do, Scott, is um, at the next board meeting, I go two weeks out, but uh, could we have Alan, we're going to, 
I assume have a closed session on progress with. I don't think we don't. I don't. I don't think we have one. Um, I thought we talked to Dave about doing that. I think we did. So. I don't think. I think Allison. We could put. We can, if you want to close it, we can put one on there. Well, it's probably good to have it on there because let's have it updates. on there. And I, w I want to ask Allison some questions regarding the SS SSMP and this program before we invite you back to do a presentation. Mr. President, as Judy said, the program does have to qualify for the state water board. Right. So you may want to have a one or two in mind or a list or whatever, okay. just so whatever you decide, you have options should it not work out. Okay, but I think once we do that and we, we talk, and I want to talk to Alan about it, then we can let you know whether we want you back to do a fuller presentation. That way you're not... Yeah, no, I appreciate it, because like I said, I don't want them looking at, like, oh, it's something that's being done already, so that's like mm -hmm. we're off into towards yeah. the other cities. No, we, thank you. We haven't even discussed it. We don't know what we are, the liability was. Yeah, so, but right. thank you for your thank persistence. You. We appreciate that. Okay, then I'm going to close uh, public comments again and go to item number uh, six. Okay. Yeah, thank you, uh, um, Mr. President. Board requested this item be placed on today's agenda uh, because of the latest news we learned from the Orange County Sanitation District and our partnership project program with them on the West Side Pump Station Abandonment Project. Uh, as you know, the last, um, uh, I think it was last week, OCSD's um, uh, staff was presenting to their operations committee the new budget for this program, for this project. And on OCSD's side, their budget is increasing from $14 million to $26 million on their side. And our side is about $7 million. So, you know, you're looking at uh, you know, a 30, $32 million project. Um, they pulled the item from the meeting because the chair and the vice chair wasn't there. But, so that was the main reason why. But the, what I'm hearing from over there now is they're getting cold feet. And they're... I felt their feet. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cold, wasn't it? And their back is yellow. <laughs> What's that? And they lift up their shirt and their backs are yellow. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're not comfortable presenting this size, this that cost to to their to their elected officials, um, uh, they're g getting the feeling that it's just not going to be cost effective to spend twenty six million dollars on this project. They're also very concerned about the tunneling underneath the San Ana River. It's very complicated. Uh, not, not so much. I think uh, you know that's you know with the the, the couple well, of maybe more the construction. Yeah, more well, the construction. Potential construction. Yeah, and yeah. that's the reason they had a major lawsuit when they went, last time they tried this method going under the Santa Ana River, they, oh, there was mm. underground flowing sand that just upset the contractor and mm. everything and major litigation. So wow. this is would only be the, this would be <coughs> the next time they tried it. So yeah. there's that. Has and there's only a few countries can do that kind of work too, right? right? So, so, um, so I, 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 when I was talking to their general manager, I said, okay, uh, fine, you know, you, you know, pull it, but let's get some closure on this project. Are you going to approve it, yes or no? And he assured me they're going to put it on their June operations committee, but the recommendation might change. The recommendation might uh, be not fund this project. Right? Hmm. Previously it was supporting the project, but now it, it, be, it, it might not support it. So with that, um, in anticipation of them not supporting it, I've directed Rob and Steve to come up with a budget to rehabilitate our five pump stations and our force mains. And so they will, they will come back with that number um, in the near future. What do you, what do you think that so number would be? Well, look, look, there was, uh, thank you. We, we had told everybody that it was actually cheaper to do the abandonment mm -hmm. than it was to do what we were what we were going to have done. However, that included two major capacity expansions, one in Wilson and one in Victoria. And those were just based on existing zoning. But mm. assuming those don't occur, those were the only gravity lines and we're redoing our model and I I'm assuming we're not gonna need to do those capacity projects. So it would just be the pump stations and force mains I don't have the number. I didn't bring it to this meeting. We have to sit down and go through all those numbers. We have a, we have most of the numbers because we had to do that as part of justifying that 101 was cost effective. 
So we have the number. We, you know, this word only hit us last week at the end of the week. So uh, we can go along those lines. And uh, Scott was not sure whether we should start going down that road or whether we should wait another month. Maybe you want us to get more prepared or less or not prepared. Yeah, or what? Well, I, my yeah. only thinking was if, we're, we're, if the project's going to be denied and we have the money there, and I just need to know your figures that you think is it going to be over three million dollars to repair those stations? Uh huh. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, it was. We were probably. Uh, I, I'll have to pull out the numbers. Uh, I have it on a simple spreadsheet, and I can send it over to Scott later today. Could we maybe talk about it at the board meeting? Does that give you enough time? Uh huh. Well, the well, numbers are all done. I know that's what I mean, but if because I, I was thinking that. If it's going to be over three million dollars, then my my thought was, if it, I thought it was under, then we could use part of that money to well, for the loan. Well, let's put it this way: we were doing something that was going to save us money. Yeah. But yeah. It, it so right. it it was like one. Here's the capital cost was equal to what we would have done if we didn't do the project, and then we save over save, the years. Save so over the years. It's not like if we don't do the project, we get to keep all the money and not spend right. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's what I was asking. Before we bring it to a board meeting, though, don't I'd rather see this on the June study session because the operate what the operations committee have met by then. Yeah, that's my recommendation. Is to wait. Let's let's is okay wait till the yeah. till op, the OCS show their hands. What's it? What's what's this going to make? And then we move forward. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I was just looking at. I was just asking for the total. Oh, you I think rehabilitated. It, I think at the next study session, I would like to, to have that on the well, agenda. We could review the. We could definitely because they're meeting the, meeting the first yes, Thursday in June. Just review. Yeah. I mean the first Thursday in June or first Wednesday in June, and then we then our study session the following Tuesday. So it's it's fine. Okay, well, yeah, sure. That's okay. Because those numbers also included banding the those stations and the you know those hundred to hundred fifty thousand dollars mm -hmm. cost for the six stations, and that doesn't need to be done anymore. Right. But anyway, we can wait till Mike, June. are you back session. by then? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I think fundamentally, yeah. Scott, we've got to meet with Herbert and them right right away because they. They told us, Jim and I and you, that this was a regional that this was their regional responsibility. So to do this project, I mean, it was, it was Herberg that told me about it, you know, because they, he knew that they had abandoned this project back in the in the mid '90s. We also have to get with them, you know, to um, I think we signed an agreement that. They're going to give us back that million bucks that we've already got invested in the ground in, in order for us to let them out of this project. For one, their policies, you know, they're being the regional provider, I don't think they can necessarily get out without us just saying, okay, giving them a wink and, you know, we, we go away and, you know, it's good for us. Um, now, I don't care if they have cold feet or yellow backs. Uh, you know, they're the ones that brought this project up, and we've invested considerably in this, and we invested in 95 yeah, in this project. Did. And so we've got to meet with them pretty quickly and say, this is the criteria for us, you know, just to let you, let you, you, let you have, your, have your cold feet and keep on going and become mm -hmm. still be the general manager over there. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, no. I'll um, today I'll, I'll meet contact yeah. with them and try to schedule a meeting. Thank you, okay. That's good. I didn't know. I forgot that. That's I yeah. think that's very salient. Yeah, makes you know, sense. It's part of uh, Rob. You probably already have this, but as part of this, getting the costs and things together, can you give us an idea too of the priority on which stations? Oh yeah, we've already we've already talked. I about thought that. I thought you guys had pretty much hammered that anyway. So I think presence the oldest one. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, what's interesting is that how the environmental telling us how we're going to disrupt that park. Yeah. Mm. Wait till they see this. We're going to be going all over the place. Uh, you you know, have force mains you, and You take one yard. project under mm. under Talbert Park, and now we're going to have how many projects mm. in different parts of the city that, that have a much bigger environmental impact. Mm -hmm. But well, they, it'll, 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 they, they don't, don't care. They it'll they fly care completely under the radar yeah. because that group of it, those, those guys right. um, are, we're not messing up their park. Right. Yeah, exactly. mm. I hate to be that way. That's well, let them help us fund the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. Yeah, really. So, 
you have uh, you go, I think? So, yeah, I need to go. I, I have direction on, on, on number six. So. Okay. Um, at number seven. Wait, before you move uh, on, get feeling is we're going to abandon this thing. Uh, yeah. If no. no. That's my, that's, we'll, we'll give better to both on it. But my gut feeling is they're going to say no. Well, I don't care whether they say no. We, we need to talk to them in order to put the asterisk beside yeah. them. Yeah. Letting yeah. them say no. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, we go there and say, you look, when, when they're going to own up to being the regional provider, They've done these regional projects for about six agencies already. So Midway Sanitary District and others, you know, they came in and they were groveling and they, and they, and then Orange County Sand District did it for them. They didn't put that in their staff report. They didn't put the history of, yeah. Yeah. Good, good argument, sorry. Well, well I talked yeah, to Rob bring, Thompson bring when he was doing it. Board. He said, I'll let you review the staff report. And I said, you yeah, know, there I'll you go. Take the lead yeah, yeah. 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 Take, yeah. yeah. <laughs> take him along yeah. for sure. Do you know anybody that has any intimate knowledge about those other projects? Bob does. Bob, <laughs> yeah. Bob's, our, Bob's our man. Yeah. <laughs> and he did them under duress. But because they were the regional provider, they did them. And because Margie Rice brought it and they just yeah, take Margie, Margie too. Margie, Margie's, got yeah. Margie's dynamite. My, my <laughs> granddaughter last Friday night performed at the Margie Rice Rose Auditorium in Westminster. Really? Uh, they love her. Yeah, I don't fault Margie. I just I no, amazed. she's just aggressive person. Yeah, yeah. I do. So well, that's yeah. <laughs> All right, then let's move to item seven. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So, uh, Wendy's going to uh, present to you a, a proposal uh, to uh, appropriate $500,000 from Project 101 to uh, start f funding our grade fives um, uh, line segments. As, you, as I think you saw in my last weekly update, uh, we uh, found another uh, another batch of videos. We found uh, 36 additional grade fives. Uh, we think it's going to be continuing. So, um, rather than wait for the entire CCTV program to be done, which is next year, and then come up with a budget, which can be huge. Mm. Our position, staff position, and, and Rob's in agreement with this, is that we start tackling now head on because they're grade fives. So, um, Winnie, I'll, I'm gonna turn over to Winnie for a second, but she's got a, a proposal that will fund, I think, 500,000 for the next two years, is that right? So, we'll have a million dollars in the next two years to take care of these grade fives. So, Winnie, you wanna? Do, do we get that money reimbursed? Well, well, what's uh, left? Uh, do we get that money You're reimbursed? Uh, <laughs> why, why isn't this money coming out of the asset management program? That's This is rehab and rehabilitation, and that's what the asset management program helped devise a funding system for. You're talking about, like, because we don't have enough money set aside yet. We've got five and a half million. We've got six million. Well, no, that's, fund. yeah, but, but that's our, our bottom is our five million and we don't have like six yeah. million when we did this asset management program we set five million and if it went down below you know then we had to figure out how to bring it back mm -hmm. up it isn't even below yet no it's not below but i am i i don't know the exact balance but i want to say it's about five and a half million mm -hmm. because the only thing that's in there is interest so i can i can pull off the interest but what i think is more prudent to do is if we shift what I'm proposing here on the sheet that you have in front of you is, and I've, I've just left the projects that will extend past June 30th. Rob's got a lot of projects that I've hidden on the sheet because he's going to be wrapping them up shortly. So, you know, Eldon and all of those, they're going to be finishing up. So basically going forward into the next fiscal year, he's just going to have the Victoria Pump um, Force Main because that's a new project, and he's going to have the... Um, Force Main, the Project 200 Force Main at South Coast Plaza and Harbor Boulevard. So those are the two projects that are going forward. So we just approved the budget for the Geisler, and Rob came up with $57,000 to get some of the grade five started that they found in the first batch of CCTVs. So our problem is if we're penny, you know, just throwing pennies at this problem until we can appropriate the whole thing when it's done, one, it'll cost us more because we may have to fix some things, but two, um, it's not appropriate for us to keep awarding these small 
you know, things that look like we're, s you know, s not using our policies appropriately, that we should bid this, get a vendor, you know, for a large project and, and have them on the line to do this. Yeah. So th that's a purchasing issue that makes it look like we're adhering to our policies. Um, the 500000 coming from Project 101 right now, you can, I took it from that highlighted area and moved it down to the um, 557 and I would do the same thing in the next year because that budget's already adopted but the total stays the same and so even with doing all that you can see that I can still meet the funding for this project by the time the project is anticipated to start if it's a go. So I haven't hurt this project at all but I'm, I'm moving money to more immediate needs and with reducing the amount that we would need per year for this project, then there'll be money to do other projects. So I think this is kind of, you know, we're meeting our 101 goal on time, but we still have money to do other things. They, they have the time and the ability to do the grade fives right now, and I would like to see us shift that 500,000. Well, I think we should proceed with the grade fives post-haste. Uh, you know, Art and I were <laughs> been a big fan of doing the grade fives, and the last time it took three years, you know, five years to do the grade fives. I think this is an appropriate means, but when Scott and staff have done projects that were supposed to come from the asset management program in the past, they've included the grade fives. Projected, so my, my now, I strongly believe that the asset management funding is the place to allocate those things. We already have that fund. Um, but see, and uh, I think I think it sends the wrong message to Orange County Sand District for us to start, you know, siphoning money out of this this project. You know, and I disagree because they've they've changed the parameters. If if this project was going to be funded in seventeen eighteen, then I would totally be on board with you that this would be, you know, I need yeah. the money yeah. year after next. I get that. But the project has changed, dura you know, duration. So now I'm appropriately doing that. Here's the bottom line difference of taking the you money from I the want. asset management yeah. mm -hmm. versus the sewer fund. If I take the money from, make a transfer from the asset management to the sewer fund to fund these, um, Rehab projects. the grade fives, then I have reduced the amount of interest and earnings that are there for potential bigger projects, and I have this huge amount of cash sitting in the sewer fund doing nothing that will be siphoned off to be used for you know immaterial maintenance and things like that. So as m my financial preferences, I like to keep that money in that fund mm -hmm. where the interest goes back to that and grows and can be used for a big bulk project as opposed to 3.2 or $5 million sitting in the sewer fund, earning interest for the sewer fund that goes to new shirts or, you know what I mean, some, you know, Why things don't we that we don't... Or, or give it back to the ratepayers who we took it from in order to do this project. But the problem is, is we need... At one time, we were building this fund to do this project, and, and it nearly was offset by... Um, the projects that we weren't going to do, you know, uh, we weren't going to have to deal with those five, six pump stations, whatever they were. You know, I, I, I I'm not, I'm not in favor of this um, because we have a fund that the asset management definition of asset management is to do rehab and rehabilitation projects. And I understand that, but okay, so then if I have five million dollars there, I could transfer it and fund this whole project and let it sit there in the. Sewer fund we don't have five you, we don't have the answers to any of those questions right now. Well, I know. So I mean, maybe we will by June. But can we wait on this item until June? Well, I don't know. I mean, can we wait one? You know, it's only next month. Because we'll have, you'll have a better determination of what well, I think, one I think one's going. Steve's How soon will the CTTV be done? It's gonna be. It's a two-year project. Yes, yeah, so two-year. So we've got half of it. So we. So. So so we're gonna. Well, our our plan was rather than wait the three to five years. We I, I, all of us in agreement that we're yeah. not going to wait. Okay, we're not going to wait. Okay, so you're, the disagreement is how to fund it. Yeah. That's the disagreement. That's the disagreement. And I think I, I, I and I and I think we're, we're I, I like what Wendy's plan is because she's showing you a plan that 
we can take five hundred thousand dollars from Project One Hundred One, and by the time the project, if assuming OCSD approves the project, mm -hmm. we will still fund it. We will still have it totally funded by twenty twenty one. There's obviously some bantering and, and yeah. there maybe some it, disagreement. I, I think it's really the same money. The money for One Hundred One came from the place that Director Uden is asking to pay for the Grade Fives. It went from that. It went from the rate payers to the asset management fund to 101 and right. now Wendy's saying right. because 101 is so far out there we just take that out All and right. we'll replace it over the years. Well I, again we, we can sit here and discuss it and go with the merits. I think this warrants taking it to the board meeting in two weeks and let's make a decision. Well we can't make a decision today. Well, you no sure we can. cannot. Sure we can. No, no, it would be, okay. it's a $500,000 transfer, so I would need board approval in two yeah. weeks. So that's what it, can I ask a question though? So my other alternative for funding this would be, um, I wait till July 1st, because we've already appropriated that budget, and it's a budget of, there's like, for the 101 project, it's 1467000 mm -hmm. So then I would come back and in modify July 1st and, and, and ask you for a million yeah. <laughs> because I want to take five from each. Right. But I wanted, you know, because we're wrapping up yeah. projects and bidding and stuff, we wanted to get started on it as soon as possible. Um, so is that what you'd like to see as an alternative suggestion on the board report? If, if you want to do that, I, I, okay. I think you're not going to get any argument. Or you are. I think it's time we've demonstrated or that no one's opposed to going forward with this project. Mm -hmm. We just need to figure out the funding. The funding. Okay. And if we can do that on May 28th yeah. and give you direction, then well, I think. Okay. We'll so if I'll you want to put that in, if you want to we'll put an option in there, that never yeah. hurts. A recommendation okay. is still going to be what you got today. Yeah, you know, I understand. Recommendation. And, and for the record, you can take action today. I mean, you can take action in your study okay. sessions. It, you know, it's just a. a well, you have two weeks. It'll, it'll be. be yeah, but, but you don't <laughs> have to. You know, you could be two to two. You so can take action. You know, from a precedent standpoint, we tended not to make decisions in study sessions. And I yeah. kind of think we ought to stay. Okay. Yeah, and in it's that not going to make a difference to us, you know, weeks. for two weeks. Okay. That's, that well, was I mean, our plan. the engineering can't be done here for another eight months. Well, if you got that many well, great and one of the things that you'll get also in that time will be his how much it's going to cost him for the um, pump station upgrades. So I think you know, in putting all the pieces together, that. You know, money's going to be shifting around. If the project doesn't go, it may shift, you know, yeah. to his and the grade fives. And, you know, so I, I think it's, you know, this is just one small component, and and yeah. then there'll be other pieces of the puzzle brought out later. Then can you have them ready for the board meeting, Rob, the cost of rehabilitation of the pump stations? I mean, I know we're going to do the study session, but yeah. Wendy's talking well, about We've talking already about done it. You just met it. I mean, could you have that at the... We have something right. for it. Yeah, Rob, you have a comment. Yeah, yeah, well, let me just take a quick step back, because... Well, first of all, uh, we are doing grade fives. The first batch is already went out to bid, was awarded, contract signed. They're starting yesterday. Today. Yesterday, yeah. And the second batch is out to bid. Just want to go over the engineering real quickly, just for uh, transparency. So what we're doing is the operator in the truck, every time he sees a grade five, he puts it on a thumb drive gives that thumb drive to Steve. Steve, myself, and Joe Lamont all look at it and we say, does this need something immediately? And then when we all agree that it goes, the answer is yes. And then we take those thumb drives and we're talking about a, a, a specialized product. This is a short liner. It's a uh, People who don't have the license for a short liner would call it a, a sectional CIPP, it's just a short piece of liner. But nobody can compete with this method. So we've gone out to the five bidders we know in the region that have a license for that product. So we are getting incredibly low cost. We're saving the cost of plans and specifications, and we're getting the work done immediately. And we're seeing some things that need to be done immediately. They are great products. So from an engineering and follow-through standpoint, we are bidding, we are uh, saving money, and we're getting the work out the door. So uh, that part's working very well. Yeah, I, I, I just wanted to 
throw that out there. So you, you know, I don't think I, I think there's a lot of agencies that can take big lessons from us. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. we've been proactive, and I mean, ever since I've been on the board this second time, these two guys especially have been so proactive on this. Um, you know, I don't think we'll ever see us in a major situation, and we've had some obviously, but. Um, there's a lot of agencies that could learn some big left. You're not going to unwit for us. <laughs> 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 a lot of agencies that could learn some big lessons from what you guys have done. Yeah. And then they can even look at how we finance it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we're not mm -hmm. sure about that so, yet. So from a cost-effective standpoint and uh, getting the work done, I, it couldn't be faster and couldn't be lower cost because if we grouped them all together yeah. and did a project, that would take time, yeah. engineering costs, bidding time, something could happen, so it couldn't be done any less expensive or yeah. more quickly. How, how many have we dealt with in the first two contracts? There's uh, 25, no, there's... The first um, one was 25 and this one's 36. Right. right. So, you know, so... And that, you have mm. any guesstimate on the... Well, we're, we're, the we're paying, we're paying approximately $1,000 a repair, and probably five or six years ago, we were got a below cost. This is five or six years ago. A below cost introductory look at these mm -hmm. for thirteen and fourteen hundred dollars each, and that, and if you do it by itself, it's over two thousand. So yeah. we're we're let we're a thousand or less, and we're we have the right guys doing the job. Yeah. And we see CCTV to approximately one hundred seventy thousand square feet so far. Linear feet. Or no. 100, 100, yeah, 100, sorry, that's linear feet, sorry. 170 out of 600. 1.2 million. One, yeah, 1.2 million, yeah. Well, so I mean, we're only doing half this year, so. Right, so uh, we, it's got about, what, 10% now, I think? We've done about 10% so far. Well, uh, it's 170 over 600, that's almost a third. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's about 100 million. 1.2 million. 1.2 million. Well, that's the whole system. Yeah. And we're only doing half this time, right. so it's six hundred thousand. Right. And we've done one hundred and seventy thousand, and we've gotten sixty of them. Then half is not, you know, they'll keep going, you know. Yeah. It's, you know, they they won't stop and then come back July first. If they're moving along, then we'll shift just monies keep, to keep them keep moving going. along. Yeah. Yeah, but they're going to be out of. We Rob found some money to do these first grade fives, and it was only fifty-seven thousand. So they spent 25000 on the first batch, and now they're out to bid on those. So if it's more than 32, then I can find some more money to keep it going till the end of the fiscal year. <laughs> but, but oh, yeah, they have some management. But apparently, we're going to save. <laughs> huh. But well, I think that we're arguing about the same money, and that uh, yeah. uh, we're okay either way. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so then we'll have that on. Yes, on we'll put it on the Okay. Uh, future study, any other oral communications? And, or, or, I'm sorry, any future study session items? Oh, we yeah. Have Jim, Jim suggested at the last board meeting that we bring up the insurance. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, the health in the health insurance. It's on the May agenda. Uh -huh. It's on the May agenda. The board meeting. Oh, oh good. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I also I think we need to have me. We need to meet with which yeah. kind of sent to yeah. ASAP. Uh, yeah. I'm going to try to some up today. Did you and Jim and Scott and Ross? Oh, when you meet, when you talk to him, tell him, you know, they're looking at a uh, a means of stripping uh, carbon dioxide out of the digester gas. And, and they've got some big proprietary things. CRR's got one out here. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell him about it. Okay. Um, they're jumping mm -hmm. up and down patting themselves on the back bust on both of them, you know, both of were yellow and were wasn't. And, and then, uh, I, when is CRNR <laughs> plant in Paris going to be functionable? They said uh, June 8th was the date. June 8th was yes. the date. 2016? Maybe at our <laughs> next study <laughs> session in June, we should talk about, maybe, Scott, maybe talk about tours. A tour, yeah. 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 We were yeah. talking about November. Good. Uh, one item I'd like on the study session, of course, would be the uh, request from Mesa Water. To talk at the next study session, a preliminary discussion on on scheduling, scheduling our meetings and doing whatever we're yeah, research we're going to do. I have not sent a letter to Mr. Dwayne yet, and I'll try to have that to you by Friday, Scott, for you to look at. Sure. Well, should you wait until we discuss?
discuss it. No, with I, the I think I need to, like we said before, I think I need to respond to him and say, we're going to be looking at this and we'll, we'll get back to you. Take it under advisement. We're taking it under advisement and we'll yeah. get back to you. Yeah. And please don't send letters to staff members anymore without closing the general election. You have to send it to private first. No, that, that's, a, that's what they want. If my brother was still working there, I could have sent it to my brother. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> send it to him anyway. Didn't kill me. Anything else? I mean, take it in. Okay. Um, any other oral communications or director comments? Okay. And we'll adjourn. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate job. you guys. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks, Wendy.